Okay, well, spring has sprung, and that means it's time for another auntie haul. So I just wanna preface this video as always by saying, you know, I don't think these trends are ugly per se, nor do I think they're necessarily bad, but I'm also of the idea that a lot of times these trends are just sort of like invented for us to, to spend money that we may not necessarily need to spend. This is why I am such an advocate for getting to know your personal style for you and to shop with that in mind, rather than with chasing what's hottest, what's new, what's cool. It'll save you a whole lot of money, a whole lot of waste. And ultimately, I think when we choose to shop and consume fashion from that perspective, rather than one where we feel like we're always chasing the next thing, always feeling sort of one step behind, then I think that's when fashion can be a lot more fun and more importantly, a lot more sustainable and timeless. Either way, trends are kind of not really going anywhere. And these are just some of the trends coming up this spring and summer that I won't be buying. And if you guys enjoy this kind of video and wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. We're pretty cool here. And very quickly before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. I know you're probably like, what does mental health have to do with trends? But for me personally, I had to do a lot of inner work to overcome feelings of inadequacy and feelings of like not feeling enough in my style. I used to shop on a chronic basis. I was looking for a lot of the answers in stuff. And that was something that I really had to face and unpack. And a lot of that I did with the help of a therapist. So BetterHelp is a platform that offers online therapy with a licensed professional therapist. And you can access that therapy in whatever way works for you. So it can be in group sessions, or one-on-one -on -one through like phone, you can do chat, or you can do virtually over video. You just have to fill out a questionnaire that addresses your specific needs. And in less than 48 hours, BetterHelp will connect you with a licensed therapist. And if for whatever reason you don't vibe, you can request a change at no additional cost. So if you've been interested in therapy and are ready to give it a try, you can get 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp using my link down below. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Let's get into the trends. The first trend that I am definitely not buying is the ultra mini skirt trend. This was made popular by this set from Miu Miu. I saw this really interesting TikTok from Old Loser in Brooklyn, where she sort of made the observation that this set and this ultra mini skirt was really only styled in one type of way, which makes it like an ultra, ultra micro trend because it seems very limited in terms of versatility and flexibility in the way that you can wear it. And I'm seeing the ultra mini as a more even basic skirt. So the mini skirt in general seems to be coming back is kind of on the rise again. And I think can really be interpreted in a more classic and long-term way in your wardrobe, especially if you go the more basic timeless route. And for me personally, I'm not going there because one, I've already lived through the early 2000s. I've had enough trauma from the whole low rise situation and I don't own any dresses and skirts. If you guys have watched my videos here in the past, I've made a whole video all about why I just don't own or like to wear dresses and skirts. That includes midi, maxi, pencil, and an ultra low rise, ultra mini skirt too. The second trend I'm seeing quite a bit of is more of a summer trend, but depending on where you live and your climate, you might actually be wearing this already, and that is the pleated short. Pleated shorts I've actually seen even last summer, but I think this year has really been the year of like the pleated dress pant, like the Aritzia Effortless Pant went super viral on TikTok. Um, Durf Avenue, the brand by influencer Matilda Durf, it has really blown up. It's all about this really sort of menswear sort of suiting aesthetic that a lot of people are interpreting as more casual streetwear and dressing down. I love that. I have a ton of pleated pants in my wardrobe. So for me, it's chef's kiss, but for me in shorts version, not so much. I don't necessarily know if it's a trend because it is a fairly classic cut and silhouette, but where I do see this being trendy is because these pleated trousers, this whole like capsule wardrobe interpretation as a trend um, is something that is trending that I'm seeing quite a lot of. And so these shorts sort of fit that aesthetic, but carried over into spring and summer, warmer weather. 
Again, it's something that I think can be totally classic, but for me, I'm just not gonna go there. I don't think it's very flattering. These types of shorts, they just, they tend to hit me in the wrong place. And in general, if I'm wearing shorts, I'm more of like a denim short type. I just don't see myself getting a lot of use out of a more formal pleated short like this. Trend number three is a low rise anything. <laughs> I did the low rise jean thing. I did the jegging thing. I am not going there again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I stand a high rise, high waisted cut all day, every day, forever. <laughs> The only time I kind of like the whole low rise situation is when when it's styled in such a way that it almost looks like, you know, you like threw on your boyfriend's trousers or something. Like the item looks intentionally oversized and intentionally styled that way. I think that's when I sort of like that type of look, but at the same time, my belly button is used to being very closely acquainted with my waistline. Yeah, the early 2000s, 2003, 2005 me is just, we don't wanna go back there. Trend number four that I am not going to buy, but it's because I already own it, is the a little too big trend. To be honest, I don't even know if the whole oversized vibe is really a trend because I've been seeing it going on for a few years now. You can see we're in an oversized situation today. I love my clothes to be oversized, especially things like blazers and jackets. I think it just adds a nice, little effortless touch, sometimes easy to go overboard with, like when I bought this blazer that I have long since decluttered. It can very easily start to look like comically oversized if you're not careful, but if done with intention and sort of being mindful of proportions and balancing the outfit, I think having an oversized jacket or an oversized piece in the whole outfit can look really nice. But I'm actually not going to be spending money on this trend because I have plenty of it in my wardrobe already. These are things that you can so easily thrift. I don't think you necessarily need to spend a lot of money to get this particular vibe. And in terms of the oversized fit, for me personally, I really only ever size up maybe one, maybe two sizes from my original, or if you're buying new, then I look for things that are intentionally made and described as being oversized. So that way you can actually stick with your true sizing and it'll still give you that silhouette and vibe that you're looking for without having the garment sort of swallow you whole, which can kind of happen a lot faster than you might think. I've definitely made that mistake. So this is not a trend that I don't like. I actually love how this looks. I think it's so effortless, really cool, and very aligned with the way I try to dress most of the time. It's just something that I don't want to spend more money on because I have plenty of that already in my wardrobe. And if you want to, I think this is something that is easily bought secondhand. So you can save a little money getting that aesthetic and consume more sustainably too. Which I think a lot of trends in the fashion cycle really rely on us to forget about. Trend number five, I am so very excited about. Let me tell you why one second. It's biker chic. Y'all, my time has come. I'm ready. So I was super excited to see this come up in my research in what was trendy and apparently leathers and like a sort of moto chic aesthetic has been seen on the runways from like Prada, Dior, Balenciaga. And I guess the way it's being styled for this season is to sort of balance out the hardness of the moto and the leathers with things that are more delicate, like sheer tops, dresses. I don't know if I'm gonna do it with dresses, but I am here for the leather. I have tons of that in my wardrobe. Very excited. I can't believe this is being marketed as a trend, but it's the white tank and jeans. The way I've seen this is mostly um, with Bottega Veneta, but what the twist was in that runway show was the jeans were actually made of leather. I don't see myself running to the store to pick up leather denim anytime soon. And for me, like a tank top and jeans is such a timeless classic staple. Um, so I kind of find it hilarious that this is something that's actually trending, or at least has been like identified as trending from what I've seen in my research for this video. So I mean, it's something that I'm definitely gonna be wearing. It's something that I wear all the time, but with leather pants that look like jeans, probably not. Trend number seven is feathers. This is something that I think we've seen like at 
the Oscars, like Dakota Johnson's dress. And it's also something that seems to be showing up as like embellishments on tops, um, sort of trim around dresses, almost like a flapper style, just to add like a little bit of fun and embellishment to a piece. I think it actually looks really nice. It's really cool. I think it's like a very interesting way to add some interest to an outfit. Like it's just not something that I can see for myself at least getting 30 wears out of. And that's something that is really important to me now. Every time I shop, I think about how many ways can I wear this? How many different ways can I style it? And is it something that I plan to have in my wardrobe for a long time. And in terms of like feathers, fringe, that's also something that is coming up as a trend. There's nothing super like trendy, I think, about these things. Fringe has been something that we're seeing from the 60s and 70s. Feathers have come and gone throughout the decades too. So in many ways, a lot of these trends are actually quite timeless, especially if you tend to hold on to these things in your wardrobe. I mean, if you're not using it, declutter it, but you know what I mean. But for me personally, if I really wanna get real with myself and knowing my shopping and wearing behaviors of my wardrobe, if I bought something with feathers or fringe, I'm gonna wear it once probably feel very self-aware while I am wearing it and then it'll just end up in the back of my closet not to be seen again until my next declutter. I think it's really fun to have like statement pieces, really fun, unique avant-garde pieces in your wardrobe if that's your style and that that's what you're looking for. But the main thing I think we need to think about is longevity in our wardrobe. Is this something that you're only gonna wear one time and never again? And if it is, that's cool, but maybe we can think about like renting it or borrowing it from somebody else. Like I think there's more sustainable ways that we can incorporate trends and really sort of unique one-off pieces into our style that doesn't rely so heavily on us spending a whole lot of money, using up a ton of resources, and potentially creating a whole lot of waste. So that's it for today's video. There's plenty of other trends that I've been seeing like fringe, cutouts, Y2K. And the truth is that trends move so quickly that by the time this video goes up, I'm sure everything I talked about is gonna be out of style anyway. Let me know if there's any trends that you plan on participating in this spring and summer. Leave me a comment down below. Thank you again to BetterHelp as always for sponsoring this video. If you were interested in signing up, you can get 10% off your first month of therapy using the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching guys. Bye.